Okay, so it is my very great pleasure to welcome uh, Joy, Jumu, and Sharmin to the Virtual International Day of the Midwife. Um, I met Joy uh, talking about the twinning projects already, uh, quite jealous really wow. of all her travels overseas. But let me introduce you to them first. We have Jumu, who is a midwife and vice president of the Bangladesh Midwifery Society. She's only 24 <laughs> and she's been selected as a young midwife leader in the Royal College of Midwives' twinning project with the Bangladesh Midwifery Society. We also have Sharmin, who is employed by the Bangladesh Midwifery Society as project manager. Um, and she is leading uh, this with the support of the Royal College of Midwives. And then finally, we have Joy, who is the Global Professional Advisor for the Royal College of Midwives in the UK. She's a midwife with a background in practice research, education and international development. And she leads the RCM's international work and has specific expertise in midwifery twinning projects. So I would like to hand over to Joy to give the presentation then. Thank you very much, Linda. And um, I'm just trying to work out if I can move the slides on. I'm not sure if you can tell me how I can do that. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, there's a little thing at the bottom. OK, great. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. It's really fantastic to meet you virtually. And thank you very much for your interest in our project and for listening in. Um, welcome especially to my two co-presenters, Jumu and Sharmin. I don't know if we're the only presentation that's taking place today that's being presented from more than one country, but Jumu and Sharmin are both in Bangladesh, which is currently five hours ahead of the UK. So trying to find a time that was uh, suitable for all of us was a challenge. Um, I'm really excited as well that Jumu has joined us because she's up country, sitting in her health center where she works. And I think Jumu, this is your first international conference presentation. And so yeah, we're really you. excited and we're really grateful to Momtaz Mam, who's president of the Bangladesh Midwifery Society for encouraging uh, and supporting Jumu in, in being the person to present. So uh, this is us and we're very happy to see you. Uh, so Jumu, do you want to explain something about midwifery in Bangladesh, please? Yes, thank you very much, Joy, and thank you, Linda. Uh, greetings from Bangladesh Midwifery Society, and on behalf of all midwives from Bangladesh, good morning to everyone, and happy International Midwife Day. Uh, I would like to talk about the midwifery in Bangladesh. So it's uh, 5,200 maternal deaths per year. Here, two to three deaths are preventable. In Bangladesh, 38% is home birth and home delivery. Only 42% of births have a skilled birth attendants present. Uh, Bangladesh government committed uh, commitment was to um, make 3,000 midwives to achieve SDG goal. Midwifery education started uh, in Bangladesh uh, in 2013. Already three batches now qualified and more uh, midwives in training. Currently, almost 1,200 midwives are deployed in government jobs. And most of them are working in the rural areas, uh, and especially with the Rohingya refugees. Uh, currently, midwives targeted at rural areas, no provision for urban population. Great, thank um, you. And also, you can continue you. with this slide. Thank you, Joy. Uh, and now I would like to talk about the Bangladesh Midwifery Society. Uh, this is a professional midwives association in Bangladesh, founded in August uh, 2010. Uh, BMS is an ICM member, uh, registered member. Uh, it was on, uh, in April 2011. It is also registered with Bangladesh government in May 2011 and with South Asian Midwives Association, SAMA, 
in June 2011. Bangladesh Midwifery Society's head office situated in Dhaka Nursing College. Uh, it also has seven divisional regional committees. Uh, it's set up by pioneering nurses midwives, respect to them. And before joining, there was no staff and no deployed midwives in the BMS. Now we have. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jumu. So some of you listening might be asking, what is twinning? Twinning is not an idea that came from the Royal College of Midwives or from BMS. Twinning is something which is promoted by the International Confederation of Midwives, the ICM. And they hope that midwife associations will twin with each other to strengthen each other. So according to Franca Cadet, who is president of the ICM and has done a lot of work on twinning, twinning is a cross-cultural reciprocal process. That means giving and taking. It's two-way, where two groups of people work together to achieve joint goals. And they, ICM promotes twinning so that midwife associations can build their capacity through working together and can share their ideas and their skills and can learn from each other. So it's important with twinning that it's two-way. It's not one powerful organization who is leading, but it's two-way. We are expecting to learn from each other. A twinning relationship makes it formal and substantive. It's something proper, something real, and it's collaborative. And as many people listening will know, ICM has three suggested pillars of a strong midwifery profession. They say that if your midwifery profession is going to be strong in your country, you need to have strong midwifery regulation, strong midwifery education, but also a strong midwifery association. And without a strong association, the profession of midwifery will be weak. So the idea of twinning is that we work together, we learn from each other, and through that partnership, we each strengthen and grow. And the Royal College of Midwives has been involved in twinning since 2012, and uh, Bangladesh Twinning Project is our third twinning project, but we also have relationships with Uganda, Cambodia, Nepal, and in a small way with Nigeria. Um, but Bangladesh is the one that's current and is, is really exciting. So we're very happy to share this with you. So Sharmin, do you want to explain to us how BMS is hoping to be strengthened through twinning? Yes, of course. Thank you, Joy. <clears throat> Uh, Bangladesh Midwifery Society twinned with uh, Royal College of Midwife in July 2017. And the objective of this twinning is to strengthen the society to advocate for midwifery profession and to create demand for midwifery services. The results uh, or outcomes or outputs are midwives take leadership for advocating midwifery profession. It is uh, in our country, it is very important uh, project because midwifery is uh, very new in our country. Great. And because we said that twinning is two way, you might ask, so what are the, what is the learning that we can benefit from in the UK? What are the reciprocal benefits? So, we know that when we twin, it strengthens UK midwifery because UK midwives are involved in our projects and they learn new things. And when they come back to their jobs in the UK, they have a different way of thinking. They share new skills. And also in the UK, we have a large Bangladeshi population. And so when we work in Bangladesh, it gives us greater skills and cultural awareness 
to meet the needs of Bangladeshi women who live in the UK. Through the involvement of our members as volunteers or consultants on our projects, also that enables them to have personal and professional development. Uh, some people uh, have not traveled far, so the opportunity to travel is uh, developing for them. And many people say that when they have participated in a twinning project, they understand far more about the policy um, aspect of midwifery because the twinning projects are working at a high policy level. Also, we know that when our volunteers, when our midwives from the UK engage with the twinning project, they become more active and keen members of their own professional association. Because when they go to Bangladesh, they see a new professional association that's just starting to grow. It makes them come back and appreciate their own professional association more. Um, so we're very happy when we see them engaging more deeply with us. We also know that our members, when they come back from Bangladesh, are very motivated about global health and development. And some of them have gone on to want to study, for example, master's degrees in global health or to become more involved in the global health community. Twinning has also influenced the RCM. It's changed our strategy and we now have a new vision uh, which our board is taking forward for the next five years, which includes international work, uh, which was not there before. So our twinning work has influenced our own strategy and has enabled us to spawn new partnerships, for example, with different government departments, with the global health community, with universities and others in the UK. So it has enabled us to grow our own networks. And that's an important strategy for us at the RCM. It's also enabled us to do some research and uh, to publish some articles in peer reviewed journals and gives us a platform to do presentations like this one at Virtual International Day of the Midwife um, at ICM conferences and, and other platforms where we can share our work. And that's good for the reputation of the RCM. And it also allows an opportunity for our staff to have a development opportunity. So some of our staff have been involved in visiting the countries where we've had twinning projects and that they have shared with us has been a very special experience for them and has helped them to understand the organization they work for better. So I hope that shares with you some of the reciprocal benefits. Um, and we're going to talk more later in the presentation about the critical success factors for twinning projects. But the reciprocity and equity is a really important part of a successful twinning project. Sharmin, this is for you to help us understand the activities that happened during the first phase of the project. Uh, yes, uh, at the first phase of the project, actually BMS uh, was not having a very well equipped office at the beginning, uh, well equipped office with uh, uh, important furniture and one full time staff like me, <laughs> I'm here full time, the project manager. Uh, earlier, there was no internet connection. After the twinning project, uh, uh, there was a good connection set up. Then we have a database consultant and financial finance coordinator part time. Now we have a uh, 24 hours helpline support. We have our financial policy, HR policy. At the beginning of the project, there was a baseline market in July 2017 and uh, three year strategic plan were developed. There was a st stakeholder analysis uh, and engagement, lots of divisional visits. We have uh, BMS office, uh, central office in Dhaka, and we also have seven divisional committees in seven divisions in our country. Uh, so uh, all those divisions were uh, 
visited by RCM uh, representatives and our executives uh, for uh, making them more engaged to our project. Uh, earlier, there was uh, not a uh, lot of uh, work, but nowadays they are very active. They are taking part in regular activities and regular meetings. So it's a really a very big achievement of the project. We uh, did uh, three media and advocacy training last uh, last year, uh, which uh, provided uh, uh, 90 midwives received uh, those trainings. <clears throat> After the uh, media and advocacy training, midwives uh, in root level given the opportunity to develop documentary and interview video for advocating their profession. And uh, they successfully uh, developed a video documentary and the doc documentary was also telecasted in Gaji TV uh, in, a, in a whole week. And it was very much appreciated. 14 midwife success stories were collected by Sarah Gregson, the RCM uh, re uh, volunteer worked here. And those were uh, published in uh, um, Bangla and English, both English and Bangla uh, newspapers in our country. Last year, almost 21 newspapers uh, published BMS news on uh, midwifery and two television, uh, television covered uh, BMS news and events, three radios, advocated uh, for our midwifery program in three radios. We did this with our, with our executive committee members. 15 midwives are getting continuous leadership development support under Young Midwife Leadership Program of BMS and RCM. RCM volunteers are coming for mentoring them and also uh, we are giving uh, some uh, kind of grants and also uh, mentoring and coaching support, training support to uh, these uh, 15 midwives like Sarah Gregson and Eli uh, Isabeli Lambar Cooper last year visited and this year also uh, visited for mentoring them. We have a uh, database of our members. Currently, we have 1,756 registered midwives. Uh, very few are nurse midwives. Uh, among these 1,756, only 167 are nurse midwives. So uh, uh, the database is, uh, you can see uh, any data we can retrieve according to our requirement from the data database, like how many members from which division and uh, uh, how many are doing uh, education uh, courses. We have online education courses, 20 online education courses free uh, in our, for our uh, members. And uh, our members are successfully doing the courses uh, through uh, our uh, you know, helpline support and other trainings we are giving. Almost 522 members started the education courses training and 255 members completed these trainings within uh, uh, from last uh, four months. We have provided uh, 35 midwives of Rohingya camp training support last year. We had a market uh, review uh, on, uh, uh, on the project last year in 2018 uh, on, the, on what is uh, the uh, was a, uh, baseline in 2017 and a review in 2018 market, how, how we are uh, doing this is a picture is clear in front of us. So uh, it was very uh, good effectively working. And uh, uh, we had also reviewed our strategic plan. After reviewing the strategic plan, we have set subcommittees 
those uh, subcommittees will work all around the year to achieve the objectives of our uh, work plan. And uh, uh, I would like to share with you a very, uh, very good example of this uh, training uh, program success. It is in the year 2018, September 15. We, in our country, it was the first online voting system implemented by BMS and uh, through RCM and UNFPS support. And uh, we had at that time 1,530 members. Among those 1,530 me 30 members, 770 members successfully voted from all over the country. Our donors and stakeholders supported and appreciated uh, the election so much. And also in the media, they have uh, telecasted news like this. This is the first online voting in our country. So uh, I think uh, um, you can uh, maybe and maybe now understand that uh, how it is working in our country. It's uh, really difficult uh, because the the midwives are <clears throat> young, uh, and uh, <clears throat> in our country we have a belief that young people are not. Uh, able to uh, work successfully, but uh, our midwives are really doing very well in the field. And uh, uh, BMS is uh, successfully can advocate through RCM uh, the work of the midwives and advocating. So thank you. <clears throat> I think uh, Joy can uh, do the next slide. Thank you very much, Shamin. So, Jumu, this is a photograph of the new executive committee. Can you tell us something about them? Thank you, Joy. Yes, I can say this is the new executive committee of BMS. The election uh, was held on uh, last September, and uh, here we have uh, we all, most of us are, are very young. Uh, if I introduce them, should I? Yes. Uh, from left, left side, uh, her name is Shamuli Khatun. She's a deployed midwife of our first batch of midwife, midwifery. The second one is our uh, uh, organizing secretary, Jima Khatun. The third one is uh, Runu, Runu uh, she is an executive member. And then Shamsun Nahar, ma'am, she is a teacher of uh, midwife, uh, of midwives. And the white one is, uh, sorry. Don't worry. Uh, Asiya, no. white one is Asiya. Uh, yes, uh, Asiya, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, she is Asiya. She is also an executive member. And then our uh, honorable president, ma'am, Momtaj Begum, she's the president of BMS. And just after the, our president, ma'am, she's our Hannah, uh, ma'am. She, uh, she is also a, uh, also a midwifery teacher. And then we have Pinky, joint secretary of BMS. And then it's me, it's the vice president of BMS. And here sitting uh, from left side, uh, she, uh, she is also an, an executive member. And then Anunna, she is an executive member. And uh, then we have secretary, uh, Karima. Then we have uh, Sanjita Talukdar here. She is executive member. And then Tamim, she is also an executive member. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, if you allow me, Joy. Yes. Uh, I would like to tell here that uh, earlier BMS executive committee was having only the midwife, uh, sorry, not midwife, nurse teachers who no, were uh, teaching midwife. But the new committee, among these 15, I'm 11 are midwives directly working in the Upajala health complexes. Earlier, there was no midwife, but uh, after 2013, the batches uh, 
received training and now we are having midwives in our committee so it it was a very big success i think for uh, our bms thank you yes thank you both and i i agree it's a great success that midwives are now leading the midwifery association but it has been a challenge because as they have both said these midwives have been deployed in rural areas some of them a very long way away from dhaka and so because of this change bms has almost had to become a virtual organization and uh, every executive member has been issued with a tablet computer but it's still a challenge to communicate with each other because of difficulties with internet connection and when we do need to have a meeting uh, they need special permission and the government order to travel and they have to travel long distances often overnight on boats or buses and so I'm just offering huge respect to Jumu and the other executive committee members for their commitment and for the incredible work that they do in really difficult circumstances. So I'm going to move us on now to the evaluation because this is the, uh, the subject of this presentation. At the end of 2018, we had an evaluation of the first year and a half of the project. More, more of a review than a formal evaluation. And we wanted to use a structure for that evaluation. So we looked to the work of Franca Cadet, who, as I said earlier, is president of ICM. Franca is also in the process of completing her PhD on midwifery twinning. And she is someone who has really led midwifery twinning from the very start. Franca recently published a paper last year on the critical success factors for twinning between midwives. This was published in the Journal of Advanced Nursing and it's open access. So you can download that article and I'm happy to send that to anyone if you give me your email address. Um, and so Franca did a Delphi study between 2016 and 2017 with 33 twinning experts from 19 countries and in that uh, research project, they identified 25 critical success factors in twinning that were grouped around these five issues, equity, values, communication, management, and commitment. And what Franca identified was that twinning has great potential to develop midwives' power, but the twinning projects that there have been have had mixed success because they haven't always been implemented correctly. Linda, I my screen has gone blank. Um, sorry, we can still see it though. Um, do you want me to take the presentation? Oh, that's why, because she's been kicked out. She will be back with us in a moment. Um, would you move or I, it's okay. I'm back. Can you oh. hear me? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I just lost. I've just logged back in again. Um, oh, thanks. quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so these 25 critical success factors were identified. And so we used this framework to review the success or to review the progress of our twinning project at the end of 2018. Um, so I just wanted to tell you what that framework was. I'm not able to move the slide forward, Linda. Is it possible for you to give me that facility? Oh, there we go, thank you. Okay, so Sharmin, um, I've explained the framework that we used. So could you please explain the process that we went through? Yeah, of course. Uh, the evaluation process, uh, phase one, uh, it was done by consultant Nestor Mayo, uh, Joy Camp, RCM volunteer, Sarah, <coughs> Sarah Gregson, BMS staff, uh, uh, present and uh, former executive board members. The methods were appreciate, appreciative inquiry, focusing on what went well. 
uh, I know that the team visited our stakeholders and uh, taken their view and interview for the review. Then did the market review, that is membership association capacity assessment tool review, did site visits, strategic plan review, and realignment with new executive action planning with new subcommittees we set up uh, subcommittees according to our work plan and uh, we uh, disseminated the work according to the work plan to the subcommittee members now the subcommittees are uh, actively working uh, thank you joy Great, thank you very much, Sharmin. So it was a participatory review. We did have a consultant, Nesta, who was ICM's um, technical senior technical midwifery advisor for uh, 17 years, so has a huge amount of experience to offer. But otherwise, except for our consultant, it was a participatory review with everyone who had been involved in the project. And in our twinning projects, we and more and more using appreciative inquiry um, rather than focusing on what goes wrong and what the gaps are, trying to identify when something goes well, what is it that has contributed to that success and what can we do to make that success happen more frequently. So that's a, been a useful tool for us. Uh, Jumu, can you talk us through this slide? Who is who, please? Yeah, the, um, thank you. Yeah, this was the evaluation team. Uh, here we have Nestor, uh, we have Sarah Rexon and uh, our uh, their Joy. And in the below team, we have um, previous uh, president of uh, Bangladesh Mirafari Society and previous secretary, Jasmine Mem. Also, we have a project manager here, Sharmina Pu and Rahena Mem and our um, present vice uh, present president of Bangladesh Media Affairs Society, Mamtaz Begum. Lovely, thank you, Jumu. Thank you. So the results of the review, uh, we're going to talk both about the successes and the challenges. I'll talk about the successes and Sharmin can talk about the challenges. Um, so the review found that all the activities of the first year have led to BMS achievements, and particularly the membership database and the online voting system and the election, which was held in September 2018, uh, the stakeholders said was a watershed moment and were notable successes. As Sharmin has said, it's actually the first online vote that's happened in Bangladesh. So it's caused a lot of interest it's raised a lot of interest even at government level as to whether in the future national elections um, and others can be done online which in a country with the challenges of communication and travel like bangladesh um, enables people even in rural areas to have a voice and i have to say that when we did the election and we saw midwives coming online and voting from remote areas and having a voice in their own association for the first time. It was actually a very emotional moment. Um, the review also showed that there had been measurable improvements in capacity, but also identified that there had been a change in behaviors, which suggested a change in mindset and values. The MACAT, uh, member association capacity assessment tool score should, did show an improvement, although only a small improvement. <clears throat> That's due to many factors, partly because it's a self-assessment tool and the people who did it the second time were not all of the same people who had done it the first time. Um, but, and, and we can talk more about that offline if anyone's interested in some of the issues we have with the current tools available for measuring organizational capacity and capturing that change. But what we did see is that previously, only one out of seven sections of the organizational uh, 
capacity had been measured as adequate, whereas in this review, three out of seven sections. So we can definitely say there has been measurable change. What the team also identified is that there had been nice examples of cultural humility on both sides. Um, UK midwives, Bangladesh midwives and others really trying to understand each other's perspective and showing cultural humility. And that there had been definitely some successes in communication and management. But there were also some challenges and Sharman is going to share those with us. Yes. Uh... Joy, you took the easy one, which is success, <laughs> and given me the <laughs> tough one. This is, this is a big challenge. Sorry uh, about that. No problem. <laughs> Actually, uh, I would say that uh, uh, the project, twinning project, is not at all easy. It is very, very difficult. Uh, and uh, from my experience, I have almost uh, 15 years of experience. And the way RCM and UNFPA is handling the project is really very, very much commendable. I highly appreciate them. Uh, sometimes when I see the challenges, sometimes I feel uh, like to give up. But uh, in our country, Midwives are really very important because our maternity rates are high. So uh, I then, uh, you know, uh, recollect myself and, uh, you know, get the enthusiasm back to work. Uh, actually, uh, people here, uh, I would uh, say it's uh, difficult because there is a bureaucratic system in the government. Uh, they work uh, really under uh, high protocol system. So there is uh, the challenge first one, equity of power can be challenging at the beginning of projects, uh, twinning project when one partner is the fund holder. Uh, fund holder and also the government uh, level communication is not very easy and uh, uh, most of the time uh, we uh, try to solve our issues and problems uh, through a good communication with the RCM and uh, UNFPA. And uh, when RCM staff is uh, very, uh, you know, they uh, start understanding the nature of the project, then when they leave, <laughs> then it is also a very big challenge. Uh, executive members and volunteers um, in capacity building they are coming and it is uh, difficult for them to go uh, and visit uh, long distances and also uh, government staffs are not allowed to uh, give time without prior approval so whenever uh, they are under coaching then they need to, I need to send uh, letters to their authority for permission. Uh, so it makes uh, things lengthy and sometimes very challenge challenging. And the most challenging thing in this project is the mindset and culture. Because uh, in our country, we have, uh, especially in our government sector, have a uh, system and uh, have a thought that seniors are seniors and they have high knowledge uh, and uh, we cannot uh, you know break the protocol and uh, midwives are new they are young so it is very difficult for RCM, UNFPA, BMS to uh, get the midwives in the right forum uh, to talk and raise their voice and also give them a chance for the training and uh, um, external exposures. And it's really yeah. very difficult. I'm going to uh, move us on, Sharmin, because we've had a five minute warning. So we need to wrap up soon. OK. Thank you. Jumu, um, can you just talk us through which activities we've done so far in phase two? Yes, thank you, Jay. 
uh, on phase two, the activities uh, uh, are so far. Uh, we uh, finalized the vision and mission and values on February 2019. Uh, the divisional committees are restructure, restructuring, and we had monitoring and evaluation workshop. Uh, we have young midwife leader, leadership development program still. Uh, we, uh, Sarah Gregson and uh, me, we developed a quality care audit tool. And WHO Delhi and Thai Commission um, UK, sorry, exchange trip to Cambodia. The recently, uh, on behalf of BMS, Samina Pu went to Cambodia. And we have e learning system. We have more than uh, 2,000 course, uh, course uh, on online. The midwives are getting the online courses. And improvements are, uh, to database and website. Uh, we have already improved the database system, and we are, we have all those information, all the informations of the midwives here. Great, thank you, thank Juma. You. Um, Shamin, we've only got one minute, so can you go through this slide for our future plans and challenges? Yeah, um, our future plan, uh, most uh, our uh, recent plans are constitution review in June, AGM in June leadership development and divisional branch strengthening, build capacity of subcommittees, introduce the advisory committee, membership recruitment, retention and organizing, develop uh, a e-learning and CPD, continuous professional development uh, platform for members, more advo media advocacy training, and uh, publication and presentations, continued support and mentoring from RCM, UK volunteers, planning for sustainability. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I think Juma will just uh, skip through this, but to say we have uh, given some leadership awards. And so just finally, what's what are the challenges for us when we think about International Day of the Midwife 2019 and the key message from ICM that midwives are defenders of women's rights? We looked at the, the list of key messages from ICM and these three we felt were very um, pertinent for the Bangladesh Midwifery Society in 2019. Women have the right to educated and competent midwives. So BMS together we need to advocate that all women in Bangladesh have the right to access educated and competent midwives. That midwives have the right to provide care across their full scope of practice. Because midwifery is new, sometimes uh, other professionals are finding it challenging to relinquish what they've been doing to midwives. And some midwives where they're working are not able to practice fully. So this is another key area for advocacy um, this year. And also that midwives need safe and enabling environments to work in. And the, the work that Jumu and Sarah have done and will take forward on quality care and the enabling environment is really key. So we're going to be focusing on these three areas. And just some uh, appreciations of everyone who's been involved. And my huge appreciation for uh, Sharmin, uh, for Mumtaz Mam, the president, for Jumu and for all of others at at BMS for the incredible work that they're doing, the spirit of partnership that they have extended uh, to us. And uh, it's really fantastic to be involved in this amazing project. And so thank I, you very much. I will not leave uh, without thanking Joy for the project. <laughs> thank, thank you, you Sharmin. Yeah. And th th thank you all for uh, hearing us. And this is my first experience to join the ICM conference. I'm very much happy. Thank you. Thank you. Done a Thank great you. job. Thank you, everyone.